Hello all and welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to perform a headless install of DietPy OS on a Raspberry Pi 3. Headless, in simple terms, is without using a graphical user interface. So, this installation will be performed without connecting our Pi to a monitor of any kind. Let's see how that's done. But before we begin, for those of you who are not very familiar with DietPy, it is an extremely lightweight Debian based OS which has a minimal CPU and RAM footprint. This would make it an ideal choice for single board computers like Raspberry Pi. It also has got a very futuristic configuration and monitoring tools in my opinion. We'll explore some of it in this video. With that said, let's get started. Our first step would be to download a DietPy image to a local system and burn that image into a micro SD card to be put into the Raspberry Pi. For that, let's head on to the internet and download an image. Oh, I have to get into an internet browser instead. So I'm opening Chrome here and then typing download DietPy. First of the results would take you to the DietPy website where you can go and download the image. Uh, there's only one common image for all the Raspberry Pi models, so we can just simply go ahead and download that. So the download has begun here and it's showing uh, maybe five or six seconds. So anyway, it's not going to be very long and we are going to wait for the downloads to complete. Now that the download is completed, let's head to the downloads folder and grab the file. Here, we've got the file in 7-zip format, so we have to extract it first before we can use it, and I'm going to do just that. Next up, we got to burn this image file to a micro SD card, which would then be put into the Pi. I'm using something called a Win32 disk image to get this done. You can find the download link in the description. Now, it's time to insert the micro SD card and wait for it to be loaded. Right now, we can see that the disk manager has recognized the SD card drive that we just inserted. Next up, we have to provide the path of the disk image that we have downloaded, extracted, and kept in a separate folder. All that's remaining now would be to click right to start burning. While the right is in progress, I'm going to brief you what we have to do next. First thing would be to transfer the successfully burned micro SD card to the Pi. Then we have to hook up your LAN cable to the Pi. After this is done, Pi is good to be powered up. Since we have the LAN connected, Pi would now try to register with the router and the router would assign it an IP address in an ideal case. Next step is to identify that IP address. With that IP address, we should be able to SSH to the Pi and configure it for our needs. All this is going to come up shortly right here. At this stage, I've completed following tasks in the background. I've moved the SD card with the diet by image that we just burned to the Pi's card slot. I've then connected my Pi and my router via a LAN cable. And then I've booted up the Pi. What we are going to see next is my router's page which provides information about the devices that are connected to it. You should also have to find similar information after logging into your router. Mine is a Netgear device and this piece of information is available under Administration and Attached Devices. Here, we have to note down Pi's IP address, which in this case is 10.0.27.11. Next up, we have to SSH into our Pi with the IP address that we just got. I would be using PowerShell for this purpose. Now let's SSH into the Pi as the root user. Give yes here and pass the default root password for that Pi as that Pi in small letters. In this screen, select OK to alter default passwords for the global user and default Unix users. 
new password for the global user has to be provided here followed by password for the default Unix users. After this, the install process would proceed to apply patches. This is a long process and would take five minutes or so to complete. We'll skip this here and move towards the end of the patching cycle. Next up, the system would prompt for a reboot. Click OK to continue. While the system reboots, we can ping the Pi's IP address to see if it's back online. As we see the response, let's attempt a SSH to the Pi. A quick fix here would be to delete the existing known hosts file and a new key pair would be created during the subsequent login. Let's attempt another login now. Give yes here and the new password that we've created. Yes, we are able to login now. Installation would take us to the software configuration screen next. Here, we have an opportunity to choose the softwares to be installed and DietPy takes care of the install automatically. Just as an example, I'm going to show you how to install SearchBot. In the search box, type SearchBot and press Enter. Tap Spacebar to select. Now, let's make Nginx as the preferred web server. Go down and choose install to start installation process of new softwares. This is going to be time consuming and we'll again skip here and go to the end of the installation process. system would now prompt for a reboot again. Choose OK to continue. Let's SSH back into Pi again now. Here, I'd like to bring your attention to the type by commands in yellow and the respective purposes mentioned. For instance, the DietPy software can be invoked as a root user to call the software configuration window that we saw earlier. I'll be doing a video on configuring Wi-Fi shortly. Meanwhile, it would be interesting for you to try out these commands. That's all I've got today. Thanks for watching and till we meet next time, goodbye.